Hey there, everybody. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. If we've never met, my name is Mr. Chow and I'm a passionate educator. And over the next five days, we're gonna be going over a new series called Exploring Skilled Trades. Now, let me just walk you through this. So today we're gonna to talk about an introduction to the electrical system of a home. Tomorrow we're gonna to talk about an introduction to the plumbing system of a home. On day three, we're gonna talk about an introduction to the HVAC system of a home and that's air conditioning and heating. And then on day four, we're gonna talk about how does a garage work? And then on day five, we're gonna talk about the different light bulbs of a home and the, just like the different terminologies surrounding that. Now I'm super, super, super passionate about all this. And today, yeah, we're gonna talk about the electrical system of a home. And in this video, you're gonna first uh, learn about the why as well as really valuable course information that um, is gonna be important for the next five days. Uh, next, we're gonna talk about a background of electricians and electric work. And three, we're gonna talk about an overview of home electric. We're gonna talk about AMP circuits and CF, uh, GFCIs and common terminology when it comes to electricians. And then finally, we're gonna look at the career path of an electrician. Now, just to be clear, this video is not to tell you everything you need to know about what being an electrician uh, entails. However, it's definitely an introduction to it. And I'm so excited to teach it. Uh, just real quick in the description below, if you're watching this in the month of December in 2021, um, there's a free email list in which I'm going to send you a free note taker in which you can use to, um, to join us as we go through these five videos. And if you complete that note taker and send it back to me, um, then I'm going to go ahead and create for you a free certificate of completion that you can put on your professional resume and really just talk about that you uh, completed over your break. All right, here we go. So let's begin. Let's start with the why. So I believe that skill trades is so important for us to teach our students because it's almost never taught in schools. Every homeowner slash renter uh, should be educated on basic um, uh, things that a, a, a home has. And then really, I just want to give everybody practical tips to care for your home when you grow up. And then finally, if you're interested, then I'm going to definitely teach you uh, what next steps you can take uh, to explore uh, more about skilled trades. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the, just the background of electricians. So according to the dictionary, it, um, electricians, an electrician is a skilled tradesperson working in the construction industry who specializes in the design installation, maintenance, and repair of power systems. So if you're taking notes, go ahead and get those down. Okay, there's an electrician. In the United States, electricians are divided really into two primary categories based on what I've been able to research. First, there's linemen, which are outside electricians who work on electric utility company distribution systems at higher voltages. And then you've got your wiremen or women, and those are inside electricians who work with lower voltages utilize inside of buildings, all right? So let me get really, really, really practical. Linemen outside, wiremen inside electricians, okay? I also wanna talk about the different types of, electric, um, of electric lines that you probably have seen. Now, I reside in the state of California and California have, has, according to this article, 25,526 miles of higher voltage transmissions lines. And I'll show you some pictures in a bit. And about 239,000 miles of distribution lines. And, and two thirds of those which are overhead, according to the CPUC. And less than 100 miles per year are transitioned underground, meaning that it would take more than 1,000 years for all the underground. Now, let me get super practical here. When we're talking about uh, higher voltage transmission lines, you've probably seen them in your life, and they look like that on the left. Uh, then you've got your shorter distance lines, which you've probably seen on your uh, local streets and stuff like that. Okay, so uh, when you're looking at these different types, obviously there's, um, sh um, and there's way more of these here on the right than there are here on the left, but you've probably seen both of them in your life. Okay, now the distribution lines on the right, it's really important for you to know that those are connected to residential properties and or commercial properties. These longer distance ones are just long distance transmission lines. Okay, when it comes to the job pay and outlook for electricians, it's really strong. So depending on the area, state or city, um, it all depends, right, where you live. And then it also depends on what type of electrician you are. And here's just five different types of the many different types of um, careers that you can go as into uh, as an electrician, industrial, commercial, residential, maintenance, or auto. According to the U.S. Uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics, electricians have the median um, annual salary of 55000 And 
a, and a mean uh, hourly wage, average uh, hourly wage of twenty eight fifty. Now, take a look at this. The best paid twenty five percent of electricians made up to four hundred and seventy two thousand, which uh, while the lowest paid made about 41,000. So the career outlook is high. And over the next 10, 20 years, you're going to see a lot more uh, electricians be recruited for different careers. Okay. And it, once again, it all depends on your education, your experience, and really who you work for, whether or not you work for yourself, you're an owner, or you work for someone else. All these are different factors that come into play when you look at, uh, the, um, the, at the compensation and the outlook for electricians. All right, next, let's talk about home electric. And once again, I cannot uh, cover everything you need to know about home electric, um, home electric. However, I can absolutely teach you some basics when it comes to things you need to know as a future homeowner or as a future renter when it comes to it. All right, let's first talk about the electric meter. On the side of every single property, you're gonna see some type of electric meter. And this is how the utility company measures the amount of electric that your home uses. Right now, it's not just going to go from zero to 100. There's going to be different numbers and there's ways for you to read it. And sometimes there's these, there's these little spinny dials. But ultimately, that's how the utility company is going to measure the amount of electric. The next thing you're going to see is something what um, people call the main service panel. And usually this is covered up, so it's not going to be exposed like the one you see in this picture. But this is really the distribution center that splits the main electrical service into individual brand circuits that run throughout your home to power the lights, outlets, and individual appliances. All right, so I'm going to talk more about that in a moment, but just basics here. Electric meter, main service panel. And in high school, in college, I never knew what either of these did, but now I kind of know a little bit more. All right, and I hope you do too. All right, let's talk more about the main service panel. Once again, it looks like this, but when you really look at it, because this is all still covered up, it really should look something like this. If you remove that panel below it, you're going to see a bunch of different wires running into these different branches and these different circuit breakers. Okay, so once again, uh, this sh will not be exposed on the side of your house. It's going to be covered by a panel, and sometimes they're locked, sometimes they're unlocked, but you can just open it, and inside you can see... Um, um, everything that this main service panel has. Now, the really important thing that you should know, um, if you don't learn anything else, just understand that inside of this main service panel, there's all these different circuits uh, and, and uh, circuit breakers. However, on the very top, as you can see right here, is what they call the main breaker. This is what pretty much the main on and off switches of your electric. So if you ever want to uh, turn off your electric, you just go to this very top, it's called the main breaker, and you turn it off. It's just literally left or right, and depending on which side it is, and uh, that just turns it on and off. Then, um, and here's some more notes here. Turning off the main circuit breaker stops the flow of, electric, um, of electricity when it goes to uh, your panel, and therefore all the other circuits in your house. So the main breaker on top is the main control switch. However, it's really important for you to know, uh, and when it comes to electric, be very careful and always approach it with caution. Even though the main breaker is off, power is always flowing into the panel and to the service lugs, uh, even when the main breaker is shut off. So be very careful. And if you're not uh, confident about what you're doing, you can always call a, a licensed electrician to really help you out. It's really important. Next. Okay, so the main breaker is on the top, and that's what you should know, on every single service panel. And then below it, you've got individual electric circuits. So let's say you just want to turn off one of your circuits, then you can just turn that one on and off. These are all on and off switches. Now this one up here is the main one, but here are the individual electric circuits. Now, if you look at a any uh, main uh, service panel, it should be labeled, right? Uh, depending on, you know, once again, like, you know, uh, uh, the and the status of your service panel, but most of them I've seen are labeled either with numbers and then on the very top, uh, like there's a little, uh, kind of like a little, uh, um, kind of like a little legend, like a key telling you number three is this, number four is this. I've also seen panels that look like this, and this is very common whenever you open up um, any single um, service panel. They're all labeled. So let's say like you want to look at your basement lighting, and um, and uh, you want to reset that, so you can turn it off and then on, okay, etc. Okay, so here's just some pictures of main service panels. Once again, super basic. Electric flows in from your service provider through these um, above line grounds or uh, uh, above ground lines, or in most uh, modernized um, or newer communities, you won't see these electric poles. Everything's underground. 
So just know that it's coming in from your service provider, okay, however that is, and then it's gonna go into your main breaker and then that's gonna go into your house, okay? So that's kind of like the three-step process there. If you look at outside of the home, I'm gonna get super practical here. What do you see? Like, what are all these different things? The main things you should know, here is your service meter and then here's your panel, electrical panel that we just talked about. It looks different on every single house pretty much. Um, and then here is your gas. So we're gonna talk more about that in another video, but I just wanna be very practical there. Same thing over here. See, every single house looks a little different. I just pulled two pictures up here. Here, we looked at our service um, electrical, um, our service meter uh, and our electric meter. And then here, it looks, it looks like down here is what we're looking at to be our electric panel. However, that's really near to the ground. I don't know if that's actually it, but it's gonna be something like that. And then here's your gas coming in. And we'll talk about that in another video, okay? All right, let's also talk about amps, circuits, and C uh, GFCIs. So if you look at amps, any standard panel today usually provides about 200 amps of service. Now, older ones can go for 100 or 150, but usually now standardized is about 200 amps. Now, the main breaker of 200 amps will allow for 200, maximum of 200 amps to flow throughout this breaker without it tripping. And we'll talk about what uh, tripping it means and, and, and all that stuff. So the most common cause of a tripped breaker, that's very common when it comes to talking about the electricity of a home, is circuit overload, okay? So let's say you're running a very high demand appliance, such as a vacuum, toaster, heater, and then the power goes out. And you're like, well, what happened? Most likely you've overloaded the circuit. And once again, what happens next? Uh, uh, the recommendation is for you to go reset the breaker. So let me go back. I'm gonna show you this again. So usually if if... If it senses that you've over uh, used it or like you've put too much um, power into like a device or something like that, these circuit breakers are here to protect your home's electric um, your electrical uh, environment. So what would happen? Let's say like the basement uh, light um, lighting uh, tripped and the circuit um, overheated. So what would happen is this would automatically go to the off position, and I've seen that a lot. And if it doesn't, it'll stay in the on, but then you would just go to your main service panel and you would turn it off and then turn it back on. And usually that will restore the electricity going to that area. Does that make sense? All right. So sometimes it trips and then it goes to the off position and you just turn it back on as a, as a um, safety hazard. Uh, or if not, you can just turn it off and on. And once again, if you do not feel comfortable doing this, please hire a, please hire a licensed uh, electrical uh, person to help you out. All right. Cool. All right, next, uh, let's talk about why you should be cautious about electricity. Well, number one and two, safety, okay? There is a possible personal fatal consequence when it comes to dealing with electric um, el electricity. In short, if you get electrocuted, how is that fatal? Well, usually what happens is, so even your human body system is is on kind of like a rhythm. And, uh, and even a little shock can mess up that rhythm, messing up one of your vital organs, like your heart or or your respiratory um, capacity to breathe or even your brain so that's where electricity is very um, very 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 um, dangerous number two home fires if something isn't installed correctly it could lead to a home fire which can once again be very 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 dangerous number three any single time you do any electrical work you've got to be very careful because for every city it's different but usually there's an inspection and a permit that's required uh, where someone is sent out from the city looking at all of the work that you just did electrical wise. And if it's not done up to code, then they can have you redo all of it. And finally, number four, peace of mind. It's really important to hire someone because they're fully trained and they know what you're, they're, uh, they're doing. So be careful when it comes to YouTubing stuff and stuff like that for all these different reasons. I want to also talk about the two pronged versus the three pronged approach um, when it comes to outlets. Okay. You may have seen different appliances have either two prongs or three prongs, but um one thing important for you to notice is usually for newer homes, you'll see these, all, all of them are three prongs. But in some of the older houses, I've seen these two prongs. So what's the difference between these two? Well, if you read here, the three prong outlet has a ground wire. That third prong is actually a ground wire, which protects you from not getting electrocuted pretty much. It's a safety thing. While two prong doesn't. A ground wire is basically a wire that, uh, that acts as a shortcut and directs any surge of excess electricity safely into the ground. That's really important when it comes to uh, safety, all right? So a lot of times you'll see these 
Older homes have these two prongs, but you can actually convert these or hire someone to convert these into the three prongs just for that safety aspect, all right? I also want to talk about CFs, uh, GFCIs. You may have seen these, um, and I just want to quickly talk about what these buttons are. Uh, a GFCI outlets exist to protect people. Once again, it's all a safety thing from electrical shock. Now, usually you'll see these not located in every single outlet of your home, but usually in areas near water, such as bathroom sinks or places exposed to water, or like your kitchen or something like that. Now, I want to get super practical. Let's say you accidentally drop an appliance into the sink full of water. This GFCI detects the interruption in the current and then cuts the power. So this is a safety thing. Let's say uh, because whenever you're using el electricity uh, products next to water and those two things mix, that could be very, very dangerous. So let's say you accidentally mix the two. Well, this GFCI isn't going to keep providing electricity to that uh, device. It's going to cut the electricity temporarily until you reset it. Okay. So it's a safety thing. And finally, I want to talk about quickly the career path of an electrician. So if you want to become an electrician in California, you're going to need at least 720 hours of electrician experience and instruction, okay, from an approved trade school or an apprenticeship program that gives you hands-on training and stuff like that. Then you're going to need to gain 8,000 hours, approximately four years of on-the-job experience to, uh, uh, to become a full-fledged electrician. Now, I also want to show you this, and this is uh, provided by a website called Explore the Trades. Okay, uh, and I love this infographic. First, you're going to graduate from high school or get your high school GED or just GED uh, degree. Then you're going to go ahead and get some education when it comes to uh, becoming an electrician. And the pay is usually 13 to $21 an hour, which is really, really fair. And most apprentices are about four years and it varies by states. Then you're going to go ahead and, you know, as you have your license, you're going to go ahead and work and earn hours and all these different things. And the pay is about 17 to 35 after um, X number of hours and X number of years, you can go ahead and actually become a master electrician or, a con or get your contractor's license. And that's about 20 to $40 an hour. And then you can go into leadership and then you can ultimately own your own company when it comes to being an electrician, a small business. Okay. So I really hope that this has been helpful and that you've learned something about what you can one day use in your home uh, in the future. I hope you uh, join us for day two. It's going to be awesome and exciting. I'm going to give you a quick introduction to plumbing and how the plumbing system of a house works. All right. So thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.